Hello everyone. In this tutorial episode, we are going to be now working with the first half of the behavior tree. Uh, but before we do that, we need to make sure that our enemy character recognizes that it's being damaged. By doing this, we need to go to our arrow and flying arrow. And in this one, we need to set up something towards the end over here. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'll do it after the emitter location before destroy actor. So over here, we need to click our, we need to do apply damage. And then the damaged actor is going to be the actor located over here. So take that and drag it over to hit actor. I know it's kind of small, but hit actor is right there. Um, the next part for the damage, we can just set it to one for now. If we're doing like health based out of 100, this is up to you at that point. The damage causer is going to be itself. And then the event instigator, if you remember from the previous episode, this is where we're going to call the character that actually shot the arrow. And so we need to get our, our get an instigator value. And so instigator, remember the instigator is already set from our, um, like from the player controller class or from, you know, the other class. We have our instigator. We need to get the controller. Get instigator controller. And then this goes to event instigator. Okay, so this is done. Uh, compile and save. And then we also need to go into character and ASP character and add our damage handler over here something that can actually handle what happens when it gets hit so uh, we're going to do this uh, uh, damage event for any damage or if you have something specific you can clarify it here um, and we're actually going to create two um, two variables. Our first variable will just be a normal boolean. We'll be using this later, but we're going to set it up now. Let's call it threat noted. Make it public. This little i means it's public. So other aside from this particular blueprint, other blueprints can now recognize it. And we're going to create another one, which is a controller, just a, a controller variable. Um, let's call it instigated object and make that one public too. We're going to be using this in our behavior trees that we're going to go to real soon. Um, and so all we really need to do is uh, set this to true when a damage gets hit and then also set the instigated object to the instigator. So instigated by this. Um, and so we'll be doing a couple other parts such as um, uh, well health can be called here but we won't get there yet um, later on in the series I'll be showing you how to handle death for the AI or even for your character it can still apply but we're gonna do uh, like just normal health handling over here and then how to get your that character to ragdoll over here so that'll come next but uh, for the moment, this is all we need to get it to recognize that instigator. Okay, so after this, we can now start working with our 
behavior trees. So underneath blueprints in your enemy folder, now we can work with behavior trees. Um, for those that are brand new to behavior trees, when you are the tree is always executed from top to bottom and from left to right. Um, you'll understand this makes sense in just a couple moments. Um, you can drag nodes down from like this yellow area and the first part you want to create are what was under this composites pane. There's selectors, sequence, and simple parallels. A selector selects one or the other. So essentially it runs this one or whatever is going to be on the left hand side. Remember it executes from left to right. It executes the left hand side first and if it returns false then it'll select the right then it will go to the right hand side and actually if you just highlight it over here um, oh I'm sorry I'm sorry that was the uh, that was the other one selector if it's true on this side then it switches to this side so anyways um, so I always start off with a selector because it makes sense to do so. And then over here, we're actually going to do a sequence. The sequence is what I told, or is what um, I was saying before, where it'll start here and then move to the next one in the sequence and then the next one in the sequence and then the next one until one of them fails and then I'll shoot back to root over here. Um, and so we are now going to create a task. Um, also with behavior trees, there are, if you look on the top here, there's tasks, decorators, and services. A task is like a, just a, it's a task. It's like a series of events that happens underneath something. Uh, a decorator is kind of like an if statement or like a, like a check. And a service is something that you want it to run almost like a, a looping conditional statement. So it's something that gets called over and over and over again that can either be true or false. This is like if you're doing a service to check health or to check, I don't know, if you've reached a certain point or something. We won't be using services. We'll be using mostly tasks and decorators. So first let's create a decorator or sorry let's create a task and now one thing that I think Unreal needs to fix is when you create the task it will create it in this type of format uh, I like to go ahead and just change it to something else as well as create a folder so new folder tasks and then I'm just gonna drop this into the folder because it looks better. And then I'm going to rename this task to random move location. Oops, random move location. Okay. Um, so in the task, if you go to the graph element, um, you can do it like this, or if you're inside of the behavior tree, and you dragged out see sequence task and then you'll see the one that we just created random move location is right here and that's what it'll look like if you double click on it it'll automatically bring you to the next one so you can go to graph from here the original video was a bit too long so i end up separating it into two parts uh next part coming up